Hello and welcome to this video on the sign rule. This video will cover what is the sign rule, when can it be used, how to use the sign rule to find both side lengths and angles, and further support. The sign rule is to be used for non-right angle triangles. If the triangle is a right angle triangle, you might consider using Pythagoras or Sokartoa to solve it. If the triangle is not a right angle triangle, consider using the sine rule or the cosine rule to solve it. Watch the angle at the top of this triangle. As it increases and decreases, so also does the length of the opposite side. The ratio of the sine of this angle to the length of the side opposite the angle is constant, and this is the same for each angle and its opposite side. The sine rule can be used when there are pairs of angles and their opposite sides, as in these examples. The ratio of the sine of each angle to the length of the opposite side is the same for all pairs of angles. This ratio can also be inverted to have the side lengths on the top line of each fraction. What about this triangle? A pair of angles, a known side opposite one of those angles, and the side to be calculated opposite the other one. So, yes, the sine rule can be used. In this one, there are two angles, a known side, but an unmarked side opposite one of the angles. So, at first glance, it looks as though the sine rule can't be used. However, given that the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, by subtracting the sum of the other two angles from 180 degrees, the third angle can be calculated to be 39 degrees. So now there is a known angle and the side opposite to be calculated, so the sine rule can be used to find y. In this triangle, there are two sides and their opposite angles, one of which is to be calculated. The sine rule can be used to find the magnitude of angle A. In this triangle, the angle and its opposite side are known, but no other angles are known, nor is a second side known, so the sine rule cannot be used. The top line of the ratio should contain the unknown, so to find side length x, the equation becomes x over sine 74 degrees is equal to 5 over sine 48 degrees. This equation can be rearranged to calculate x, which becomes 6.47 centimetres to two decimal places. In the second triangle, the unknown angle is first calculated and then the equation becomes y over sine 39 degrees is equal to 9 over sine 67 degrees. This can also be rearranged to calculate y, which is approximately 6.15 centimetres. To find an unknown angle, the top line of the ratio should contain the sine of that angle. For this triangle, the equation becomes sine x degrees over 8 is equal to sine 45 degrees over 12. This can be rearranged to leave sine x as the subject and the right side of the equation evaluates to approximately 0.4714. Now the inverse of the sine of the angle must be used. This looks like sine to the power of negative 1. So the inverse sine of 0.4714 gives an angle of approximately 28 degrees. In this example, angle V degrees will be calculated first, since the side length opposite is known. The equation becomes sine V degrees over 25 is equal to sine 125 degrees over 84. Rearranging this equation yields a value for sine of V degrees of 0.1258 to four decimal places. This gives a value for angle V of approximately 7 degrees. This in turn gives a value for angle W of about 48 degrees. For further support, contact your local academic skills numeracy advisor on your campus. You can access the academic skills numeracy resources on LEO. You can also search the internet for exercises with solutions 
on the sign rule. In this particular example, there are 649,000 results, so there is no shortage of material to practice with.